John here, guys, and today we're talking about the T Motor FT5 freestyle frame. And it attempts to make a number of tweaks on the traditional freestyle frame design principles. We're really going to have to get this built up and fly, but I wanted to show you guys just what they're doing because at first glance, um, like I probably did, a lot of you are thinking, ah, this is just a regular old looking freestyle frame, the same kind we've had for a number of years. Uh, it's sort of a mid-range price at 50 bucks. It's not really cheap. It's not really expensive. Uh, is there any reason I would want to go with this versus like a Glide or a Source 1? Or am I better off just spending a little more money and getting either the Bang God or the Marmot or the Badger, which those are pretty much what I consider to be the best freestyle frames on the market? Or are you <laughs> better off spending even a little more beyond that and getting something like the Impulse RC Apex. Well, we're gonna help to address that for you, but one of the things that I really wanna know, and I'm gonna mention more on the bench, is that this has seven unique different types of screws, three of which are somewhat non-standard sizes. It also uses a extremely unique U-shape standoff machined piece. And so if either of these break, uh, I have no idea where you could possibly get another one of these. And without this piece, the frame actually will not go together. These two pieces hold the segmented top plate together. That's one of the unique design features of this frame. And so one of the things that I like to consider when I'm considering a frame is how many distinctly unique pieces of hardware, carbon, etc are there on the frame and what is the availability of spare parts that is one of the um, advantages that a lot of the frame design companies like armor 10 like catalyst machine works like impulse rc or like uh, fpv cycle is that spares are readily going to be available one of the things that i notice about flying some of these um, frames that are made by the motor manufacturers or the bind to fly manufacturers is that a lot of times finding spare parts like top plates like arms etc can be a little problematic so we'll see what the availability of the spares are for this but let's get to the bench this does take on a lot of very um, unique sort of design tweaks on the traditional freestyle frame uh, design shape as you can see you do have your very traditional elongated center body now this is somewhat thinner than the original designs it's more kind of reminiscent uh, the arm shape and the center shape of the apex frame design but this does have a lot of um, departures from that that make it quite unique uh, most notable is the three sectioned off uh, component pieces of the top plate this is not one single plate at the top uh, like we have at the bottom here now one thing you i do note right away is that this bottom plate does have to be renewed removed in order to service your sensor stack from the bottom but if you want to get to the center stack from the top you only have to remove these two screws right here and that is sort of an interesting convenience feature but is that feature going to be worth the sort of complicated um, sort of the complication that's added um, to that? Now it does come with a lot of the stuff uh, that you see here, a lot of the hardware. Uh, it comes with this very nice uh, sort of a Kevlar strap. This very nice sort of a Kevlar strap. Also comes with some pretty good instructions right here. That have a nice exploded view of how everything goes together in addition to your parts list and a rendering of the assembled frame on the other side to kind of give you as a guide uh, one thing that was a little bit interesting about this frame is that it has seven that's right seven different types of screws and at least three of them are very non-standard screws that you would probably not have in your M3 spares um, box. It also comes with these different sort of like a foam sticky pad things that are going to go on here to act as sort of a grip for your battery. 
but let's see if I can count the different types of screws here. You have these stack screws in the middle. Now these are notable because these stack screws do have to go all the way through the bottom plate, all the way through the arm, and all the way through this middle sandwich plate right here. So these are 30 millimeters. If you do keep some stack screws, they may be shorter than that. The ones I normally keep are like 25 mils. So these are unique to the frame. Then you have these um, that go into this countersunk top plate. I left one out so you can see right there. That is a non-standard screw you're not likely to have. Then you have these two screws which are a different length. They hold this sort of little front uh, protector, printed protector that's included on here that is orange. There are some very tiny little washes behind that that come with that. That's sort of non-standard. You can also see that your weight is sort of adding up 16 screws just with the assemblage of the frame on the bottom. Then you have 10 on the top. That's 26 screws, not in counting uh, any minor screws for your VTX or your camera. That is quite a lot of hardware that is going to be increasing the weight. I do like that the arms are very nice chamfered design. They are 5 mil stick, perfectly serviceable. But these little mini top plates and this long bottom plate are both 2 millimeters thick only. That is a little thinner than I would like on my freestyle frame. Uh, and I can compare to a couple of popular freestyle frames right here. Your Armitan Marmot right here, which is going to be basically the same as your Badger design, is a very nice, thick 5 millimeters. The Bang God by Catalyst Machine Works actually has a three millimeter bottom plate. So this is thinner than all of those. The Bang God sort of middle plate actually is a bit shorter because of the camera cage at the front. So it has less of length right here that is gonna act as leverage to snap that bottom plate. So it does concern me how thin this bottom plate is on this full size five inch frame. Um, normally you see two millimeter carbon used on something like this. This is the three inch bang gut. So two millimeters is fine for three inches, but is it still okay for five inch freestyle in 2020? Um, that's what we're gonna try to explore once we get this thing built up. The other thing I really wanted to show you guys here is this three piece top plate design. Um, and of course, if you take the top plate, these camera plates just kind of fall off. I don't know why anybody's still using camera plates in 2020. We should all be using printed arm or camera holders. I prefer that than messing with these things uh, because they just kind of fall off as soon as you need to service your quad. Um, before I forget, it does come with these TPU antenna holders at the back. Uh, Mortal T holder on the bottom, which I like that it's crossfire ready in that way. And an SMA at the top. Now, I don't necessarily like that they modeled it. These are sort of a dog bone standoff if you can look at the front. I don't like that they made that for the top because if this gets jostled at all and it falls just a little bit, look what's gonna happen. It's very loose, it's very loose. It only fits at the very top. I don't like that, personally. Um, I would have designed it in a slightly more flexible TPU and I would have designed it for the thickness of the inner portion of the dog bone so it could just sit secure at any length in here and not just at the top. So let's check out this three thing. The way that it actually works is it has these U-shaped um, sort of, they're not quite standoffs. It's like a U-shaped machined aluminum piece and they have three screw holes on the top and two on the bottom. So they screw in to these screw holes right there that is holding these two in place and they sort of act as an anchor point for the middle plate and the two plates that run at either the top or the bottom. And so if you look at the one that's at the front, you have two of the holes right here. Same thing on the rear. And then the middle plate is only held on by two um, screws only at the middle portion right here. So if you do see some breakage I'm thinking maybe in here. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's fairly well supported. 
but when you have these frames that are not made by frame companies and are made, they're made by motor manufacturers or other component manufacturers, part of the difficulty tends to be getting spare parts. And so the frame at $50, is it cheap enough to just have a, a totally separate frame for these? Maybe, but if one of these or the bottom plate ends up being somewhat breakable, it could be problematic trying to get one piece. You're probably gonna have to buy like some kind of package set of extra plates. Uh, so I don't know if I really like that. The middle plate does have a lot of press nuts in there. Of course, that is another non-standard piece that does add to the weight, meaning that this plate with the press nuts is probably gonna be somewhat of an expensive piece. Uh, man, I'm really uncertain about this U-shaped design, but that is how it goes together. You can see that it does have 20 by 20 option in the middle. Um, there's no accessing it to put on those screws from the bottom. So if you were going to go 20 by 20, you would want to make sure to put that on here prior to assembling these two plates that hold the arms in place. The arms are a very nice design that sandwich into each other on four corners. You can see that in the instructions right here. So you should have an extremely low amount of arm wiggle. And I think that's gonna be a pretty solid design. So I do like how they have arranged the arm design of this thing. So what do you think guys? Are you flying one of these already? If so, please share some of your notes. I'm gonna get this built up as soon as I can so I can give you a flight. We'll see if T-Motor actually wants me to try out some T-Motors with this. If not, I'm gonna use whatever my own personal selection is going to be and create a Johnny Five edition. Uh, so I don't know, mid-range, pretty good price. I like the design. I like that they're kind of pushing the envelope, but keeping it overall uh, a shape that actually works. Thanks guys.